Our scripture reading this morning is found in the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, that, saying Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. And each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them, With the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Every Sabbath is a special one because we're able to come into the presence of the Lord and worship Him. But today is a special Sabbath in that we are having communion Sabbath. It's a time of recommitment. It's a time of self-reflection. It's a time for us to assess where we are in our relationship with God and to recommit our hearts to Him. And so we're going to be taking a break, if you will, from our stewardship series. I've included in your bulletins the notes from last week's sermon. 
So if you'd like to review those, you're more than welcome to. I'd encourage you to do so as we're thinking about the topic of stewardship. But this morning, I'd like to share with you very briefly under the title, Milestones, from Joshua chapter 4, Milestones. I invite you to pray with me as we seek to hear God speak into our heart this morning. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, what a joy and a privilege it is to come into your house and to worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, as we prepare our hearts for this communion service, I pray that you will teach us the importance of this spiritual milestone in our journey with you. Thank you, God, for hearing and answering this prayer. Please speak to our hearts and help us to have willing hearts to hear your voice and to respond as you would have us to respond. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Over the course of my life, there have been many influential people who have helped me to become the person that I am today. And one of those people was my high school basketball coach by the name of Doug Hampton, whom everyone referred to as simply coach. And while coach had his unusual basketball terminology, while coach had his unorthodox way of getting the most out of his players, there was one thing that coach did that has especially stuck with me to this day. I remember a time where we were in the middle of a basketball game and we were uh, up on this team by about 20 or more points and it's late in the game. Uh, it, it, there was a very small chance that this team was going to come back and win against us. And one of my teammates scored a basket. And at that point, our coach stopped the game by calling a timeout. Now, when he did this, I, I was a little bit confused because if there was anyone who should have been calling a timeout, it should have been the other team who needed to figure out what was going on and what they needed to do to try to beat us. But instead, my coach was the one who called a timeout. And so confused, I kind of looked at coach and I, I looked at uh, what was going on on the floor and I, I soon realized why coach called a timeout. You see, my teammate who had just scored the basket, he had reached an important milestone of his high school basketball career because he had just scored his 1,000th career point. And so my coach called a timeout uh, so that he could honor that milestone. And so he ran out on the court with a plaque and he honored my teammate for having reached this milestone in his uh, college basketball ex or his high school basketball experience. And, and as I thought about this thing that my coach did from time to time, I couldn't help but think that God, uh, oftentimes he has us to call a time out to experience the spiritual milestones in our spiritual experiences, amen? And, and I believe that this is exactly what's happening in Joshua chapter four, verses one through seven. You see, at this point in the biblical story, the children of Israel have been on a journey. They've been journeying from the wilderness and they've been going into the promised land. In Joshua chapter three, we see that the children of Israel, they have just crossed over the Jordan River. In other words, God has miraculously opened up the Jordan River so that the children of Israel can cross on dry ground. And then we see God tell Joshua to tell the people to do something very interesting. We, we read it earlier this morning, but the Bible says that God said to Joshua in verses uh, one and two of this text, he, he says, take for yourselves 12 men from the people. He says, one man from every tribe. And then you're to command them saying, take for yourselves 12 stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the fe priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. And according to verse six, these stones were to serve as signs. They were to be markers, indicators, or milestones, if you will, of where the people were at in their journey with God. Don't miss the parallels from their time to ours. Just as God was taking his people through the wilderness to the promised land, God is taking us from the wilderness of, of, of this world to the promised land of heaven. Who says amen to that? Uh, just as God led his people safely across the Jordan River, God is leading us safely through the trials and challenges of this life. And yes, it may get bumpy from time to time, but the fact that we're all here today means that God is safely directing us. Who says amen to that? And I would suggest to you that just as God uh, told the people to stop and uh, to recognize these milestones, to set up these milestones, these markers where they were going to be camping, that this morning, this communion service, 
is one spiritual milestone that God wants us to stop and recognize on our spiritual journey with him. So this morning, as we prepare our hearts for the communion service, I wanna share three brief reasons why it is important to recognize the spiritual milestones in our lives. You see, the first reason that God has us to recognize milestones is because milestones remind us of God's goodness in the past. I'll say that again. Milestones remind us of God's goodness in the past. Looking ahead at verse nine of the passage, the Bible says, then Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. In other words, as Joshua and the people would look at these stones, they were supposed to be reminded of what God had done for them in the past. Their, their minds were supposed to be taken to that experience where uh, God had miraculously opened up the Jordan River and led them across on dry ground. They were to remember that God had been faithful to them. They were to remember that God had literally made a way out of no way. And I would submit to you this morning that this communion service that we're about to experience was given to us by Jesus to function in the very same way. You see, the foot washing service reminds us of the humility in Jesus coming to this sin sick world to, do, to serve. That the bread reminds us of Jesus' body broken on our behalf. And, and the wine, it reminds us of Jesus' blood shed for the remission or the forgiveness of our sins. Who says amen to that? How, how many of us need forgiveness this morning? I don't know about you, but I haven't always gotten it right. I still don't get it right from time to time. And so I'm grateful for forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And as we celebrate the communion service, it should be an opportunity for all of us to remember of how God has been faithful to us in the past, not just through Jesus Christ, but through the individual acts of faithfulness that he extends to us each day. And so we see that milestones remind us of God's goodness in the past. But going back to our text, we also see that milestones show us where we stand in the present. Again, we see that milestones show us where we stand in the present. When you skip ahead to verses 19 and 20 of Joshua chapter 4, the Bible tells us here, Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. So where did they camp, everybody? They camped in Gilgal. We're going to come back to that. And those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Now that name Gilgal doesn't mean a whole lot to us today. Some of us are wondering what in the world is a Gilgal? What, what, what is Gilgal? What is this place? Uh, why, why is the Bible bringing significance to this place? But if you were to take out an Old Testament map, what you would notice is that Gilgal was not in the wilderness, but it was also not in the promised land. In, in other words, you could say that Gilgal was not the final destination, but it represented the current location of where the people were. Does that make sense, everybody? So Gilgal was between the wilderness. It was between the promised land. It wasn't the final destination, but it was their current location. And church, I believe that in the same way, the communion service is meant to serve as a spiritual milestone that shows where we are at in our relationship with God. It's supposed to cause us to pause and assess where we are and uh, how we can grow closer to God and perhaps the opportunities uh, or, or perhaps the moments that we failed in our relationship with God, but we are seeking forgiveness from him. You see, in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28, here's what the Apostle Paul said, talking about the communion service. He said, but let a man or a person examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, this communion service isn't just another spiritual activity that we do just to do it. It's a time for personal reflection. It's a time for us to assess where we're at in our relationship with God. So I would encourage you to ask and answer the questions for yourselves. Since the last communion service, have I matured in my relationship with God? In what areas is God calling me to a deeper faith and commitment to him? Or am I just going through the motions of my spiritual experience? Am I just showing up and partaking of communion because everyone else is doing it? You see, too many times, church, we are too casual when it comes to spiritual things. And I would absolutely hate for us 
to walk out of this communion service the same way that we came in. I believe that God is calling us to pause and to really think and to reflect. Where am I in my relationship with God? Do, do I have the assurance of salvation or am I not really sure whether or not God even exists or whether or not Jesus can really save me? Church, now is the time to pause and reflect. Now, now is the time to reaffirm our commitment to him. And I would encourage you and challenge you to make sure that, that you take this thing seriously. And, and if you need to step off to the side and have personal prayer, make sure you do that. If you need to ask for forgiveness or extend forgiveness to someone else, make sure you do that. But don't let this time go by without making the real decisions and the real commitment that God wants us to make. Who says amen to that? And so we've talked about how milestones remind us of God's goodness of the past. We've talked about how milestones remind us of where we stand in the present. And as we go back to Joshua chapter four, I believe that the third reason why milestones are important is because milestones have the potential to impact our future. Milestones have the potential to impact our future. I want you to read with me through verses 21 through 24 of this passage. Because here Joshua says something to the people that's very key for us to understand in the context of communion. The Bible says after the people had set up these milestones in Gilgal, that he, referring to Joshua, spoke to the children of Israel, saying, when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over, that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. In other words, Joshua recognized as he's talking to the people that there would be future generations who would come after this current generation that would ask about what these stones meant. That there would be future generations who needed to be told about what God had done for them. There would be future generations that did not have the experience of crossing the Jordan River, but yet they would benefit from the experience of those who had come before them. And, and as the parents were to share this experience with their children, it was supposed to be a testimony not only to their children, but to everyone else on the face of the earth. And I would suggest to you this morning that every time we participate in the communion service, that in a real sense, we are benefiting from someone else's experience. Amen? Oh, you all missed it. <laughs> I would suggest to you this morning that every time we experience the communion service, it is a reminder that we are benefiting from someone else's experience. What do you mean, Pastor Rodney? Uh, last time I checked, none of us have been beaten to a bloody pulp for crimes that we didn't commit. Last time I checked, uh, none of us have lived a sinless life without sin. Last time I checked, none of us were crucified between two criminals for crimes we didn't commit. Last time I checked, uh, none of us uh, rose on Sunday morning with all resurrection power in our hands. And, and so in a, really, uh, in a real sense, the communion service is a reminder that Jesus has done all of these things on our behalf, and yet we benefit from his experience, amen? I mean, if you can't get excited about that, then I don't know why you're here, amen? Because when I think about what Jesus has done for me personally, when I think about how he transformed me from a monster into a missionary, when I think about all the times that I should have been dead or I should have been strung out on whatever, God has been faithful through Jesus Christ and it's because of Jesus' faithfulness that I'm here and that you're here today. Hallelujah. Thank you that Jesus, he, he went through things that we will never have to go through. And because of that, we can celebrate his perfect and complete death as we experience the communion service today. Think about that for a moment. I, I mean, really think about it. Because in a real sense, we benefit from Jesus' experience. And as we experience the communion service today, guess what? It's also an opportunity for us to educate our children and impact lives 
in the future that come after us. And so I would encourage you, if you have children, even though they may not actually partake of the communion service, talk to them about what you're doing. E educate them on why we wash feet and why we come back and why we partake of the emblems. I, I believe that communion is one of those things that uh, each person needs to decide whether or not to do individually. As Adventists, we practice an open communion, so we're not going to forbid anyone part from partaking. But, but really take this time to educate your children, even if they're not old enough to participate. Tell them, walk, walk them through, help them to understand. Because one of the best gifts that we can give our children is about our knowledge and our experience with Jesus Christ. I think this is something that I'm becoming more and more sensitive to now that I'm a new parent. I'm not just making decisions for myself, but, but I'm thinking along the lines and how my decisions today can impact my little girl. And if Jesus doesn't come before then, how even my decisions can impact to generations beyond my little girl. And so as we're thinking about the communion service today, let us remember that yes, this is something that Jesus did in the past, but he also wants us to be affected by it in the future. I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24 through 25, where the Apostle Paul says that when we eat the bread and drink the cup, we do it in remembrance of Jesus, and we proclaim his death till he comes. And I believe that God wants us to look forward to the future when Jesus will come. And the Bible also says that one day in heaven, he will enjoy a communion service with us in the flesh. And so this morning, we're getting ready to transition into our foot washing service, which has also been called the ordinance of humility. And here's how this is going to work. We have a room right here in our gym that's set up for the men. And after I, I have a word of prayer, we're going to transition and the men, you can go out through this door right here. Uh, to the back of the room and, and my right, your left. Uh, we'll have the ladies. Uh, you can go around outside and back into the building. And then there's a room set up for you all as well. If you don't feel comfortable participating in the foot washing service, you can remain here in the sanctuary for a moment of uh, quiet meditation, prayer, reading your Bible, wh whatever. But just make sure, let's make sure that we're reverent and, and that we're humble as we're spending this time and recommitting our lives to God. After we're done with the foot washing service, there's a table out here with pre-packaged emblems, okay? So we're not gonna be passing around the bread and the grape juice like we normally do. But you'll go ahead and pick up your emblems. You'll come back to, into the sanctuary and then we'll have the serving and, and partaking of our emblems from there. So let's have a word of prayer. And again, I'm praying that all of us will recommit our hearts to Jesus and experience him on a deeper level as we do this in remembrance of him. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this spiritual milestone of the communion service. We thank you, God, for the rich and deep meaning that is in this communion service. And I pray that this communion service would not pass us by without you touching our hearts and changing our lives. God, I pray that this would be a turning point for someone that as they look back on this day in November of 2020, that they will say, yes, that was the day where my life changed. And God, all of us are in need of recommitment in some way. So I pray, God, that you will strengthen us through this communion service, that you will help us to experience you on a deeper level, and that ultimately, through this, we would proclaim your death and your resurrection till one day we see you face to face. Please bless us, please fill us with your Holy Spirit and enable us, God, to really grasp what you're trying to teach us over the next few moments. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name.